Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Sinead Says Podcast. This week we have my good friend Trisha Lewis on who is going to come on and talk about her journey. Um, she's also known as Trisha's Transformations on Instagram. Trisha talks about her time at rock bottom in 2017 and how she has bounced back to get fit and healthy. She has now become a new business owner of her new business, Sharp by Trisha. She has two best-selling books and she's just been doing so amazing and she's such an inspiration to talk to and her story is so moving and yeah let us know what you think and we'll get right into it but before we get into it we're going to talk about our sponsor better help you will notice that we talk about therapy a lot in this episode because both me and trisha are big advocates for therapy and in our journeys and i hear i talk about the i'll be happy when syndrome it's very it's a thing we talk about in meditate in the meditation teacher world um um it's about thinking about when you get all these things like when you get the weight loss or when you get the the job or when you get married you're going to be happy and you have this syndrome that like when you get these things you're going to be happy um and then with things like meditation and therapy you begin to like learn to love the moment and to understand you know why are you like that and why are you searching validation outside of like your own self so that is another big reason why we love therapy here at the Sinead Says podcast and we have a discount code for better help which is an online therapy and counseling platform where you can just go on the app and get a counselor there's loads of little webinars and group webinars and stuff on there as well um to help you out for anything so you can get um 10 percent off your first month with betterhelp.com slash need that is betterhelp.com slash need Hello and welcome back to another episode of the Sinead Says Podcast, the first of season four. And I'm so excited to finally have Trisha on. I tried to get her on last year and it wasn't happening. And she was like, give me, give, you were like, give me a few months. We'll, we'll talk about that later. But, um, and then now you were like, yes, I'm ready. And you sent me your schedule and I was like, yes, I'm so excited. And anyone that doesn't know Trisha, um, must be living under a rock because Trisha's like, you're like an OG, like you were on the scene a long time ago um you did your instagram as trisha transformations and you really um did your fitness and health journey all rec- everything was recorded and it wasn't just fitness it was all crack there's always the yeah. crack with you and then you just went on to like literally take the world by storm you were on the lit lit show that people a lot of people know you from you wrote a book um you have your own business now sharp that's a I know. one. Sharp by Trisha Lewis. It's very exciting. I know. I'm so excited because I'm getting my delivery this week and I'm like cooking flat out. So this is going to be, um, this is going to be good for me. So welcome to the show, Trisha. How are you? I'm really good. Thank you for your patience because I love to understanding you were like, yeah, no bother. I was just like, I'm not ready yet. I've just figured out something else new in my life and I need to get there. So it's really, it's a pleasure to be here because I enjoy listening to it as well. So I'm delighted. Yes. So first I will just start off like a little bit about yourself. You know, I hate that question, but, um, you know, to introduce yourself and like how you came to be where you are today, you know, how did Trisha Transformations like really begin and um, yeah, go for it. Okay, so my own name is Trisha Lewis. I'm from County Limerick, I'm 34 years of age, and my career is I'm a professional chef. So I suppose the reason why I Instagram came about was as all my life I've struggled with weight. I've since I remember I've been on a diet and been on a scales, and you know it's really what I see now where kind of errors happened. Um, but for the kind of general gist of it is I hit 27 and a half stone on the scales while I was the executive head chef of a restaurant with a brigade of 20 people. It was just really scary because my career was absolutely flourishing. We were winning awards at Brent Centre. Restaurant was full and it was just amazing. But my personal life was in absolute tatters. So what I did was I ended up booking a gastric bypass in Belgium and booked it, paid for like 4,000 euros, which was 50% deposit. And I said I was going to go for it. And I wasn't going to tell anyone because having eight sisters, they always like, you know, they look out for you and stuff. And there were a lot of them were quite worried. And eventually, through the jigs and the reels, I actually ended up canceling it. And I think that's what started off the worst year of my entire life. I had a booked for March the 15th in 2017. And I got gotten so like into how I was going to be when I was thin and I was going to be so happy then and just cut my stomach up while just get it done. And the truth was that year, that's when I found my mental health, we hit the gutter and I didn't want to be here anymore because I kept kind of telling myself, 
you know, if you can't even do gastric bypass, what can you do? And it was my inner thoughts were so, so awful. Um, so roll on the January of 2018. I was really, really down because I didn't want to be around. It was New Year's, all this kind of woohoo. And I'm like, this is not fun. And uh, my trigger moment would have been my sister. So my sister was expecting her first child and she rang me. We all live near each other at home. And she said, you need to come down to me because there's a bit of a problem. And she was after experiencing quite a frightening bleed. So I got her into the car, brought her straight up to the maternity hospital. And she was crying. She what can I say? They checked. The scan was fine. Everything was fine. Heartbeat was there. And I remember it was the moment I heard Danny's heartbeat that my heart it nearly, it nearly stopped because I was so sad. I was like, this baby is real and it's going to come and I'm not going to be here or if I'm going to be here, this child is going to know me as who I am now. So we left the hospital and I'm Marie Connor being in the car park and was like, look, I need to talk to you. She said, I'm so sorry. She said, I'm so stressed. I can't sleep. I can't eat. All I'm thinking of is you're going to go and my baby's not going to know you. She was like, when can we ever make you see who we see? So what I did was I blocked her for two weeks. I completely ignored her. I was like, I ghosted her. I was like, remove friend from Snapchat. Everything, because I couldn't handle it. I was like, leave me alone. And then she texted on February the 5th of 2018. And she said, it's the first Monday of February. Is there any way you can make this your month? Normally I'd reply, she named that like, yeah, I'm on the way to Zumba. I just did CrossFit. I would join gyms to shut them up. I was like, go away. And I texted her back and I said, honestly, I couldn't do it anymore. And I was so sorry. And even to see the text message now, I, it's, I don't, I know who it is, but I can't remember being in the mind frame to write that. I told them that they all needed to move on with their life. That I loved mom and the sisters very much, but I couldn't do this anymore. They had to stop worrying about me, that I was just leave a go. That was the day I changed my life. Within two hours, I joined the gym. I said, look, I'm going to just chance it and see what happens. And here I am, eight stone gone later. Two best-selling Irish books. I give up my career and now I have my own company and I'm chatting to the one and only Sinead Hegarty. So things <laughs> happen and it's, it, was, it was a hard journey, but by God, was it exactly the journey I wanted to do. Yeah, because sometimes you have to hit that rock bottom and sometimes you are in denial. I don't know about you. I definitely was in denial in, in a session and there was one moment for me when I just accepted it and I just said, I really need help. And do you think like up until that point, like you were sort of in your own little bit of denial and then when you accepted it and you, you know, obviously yours is different because someone told you it's like, whoa, it's like yeah. more like it was it probably triggered you into like defensive mode, like leave me alone. And that can be really hard. And like, but, you know, sometimes people don't start the journey until they accept hit rock bottom, first of all, and then accept So do you think like, yeah, and you, I agree. And I think yeah. that you, you said the word defensive and I think that the most asked question I get is what do you do with somebody who might be in your position before? Mm-hmm. And the truth is you're probably not going to get the answer you want. It's going to be a reaction and it's not directed at you. It's from hurt inside. It's from being fat chained. It's, it's there's so many things that happen. But what I would say is a lot of times people like, was that a kind of a light bulb moment for me, every single waking hour for years before that was me hoping and dreaming that you know, tomorrow might be the day, tomorrow might be the day I could change my life or something might happen. But for me, it was a build up of a lot of interventions, a lot of moments in my life where I just didn't feel good, like really bad. And then I just said, I'm going to chance. And I think with the cancelled gastric bypass, I felt like I had no other option. I was like, so what else can I do? So I ended up, I ended up kind of choosing my suffering. Number one, I was suffering as I was. And number two, I was suffering in the gym because I was like, what is this? I don't like it. And I ended up loving it. But for me, it was it was uh, like, it was like death by a thousand cuts that eventually something triggered. You literally took charge of your moment or of your life that moment. And you stepped into the gym. And yeah. how was that? Like, I feel like even anyone who's like been out of whack or in a rot, it just seems like so, so scary. And yeah, like talk us through your moment when like when you went there and just began the process, I suppose. Yeah, it, it was because I remember after my sister, sister had sent that text, I was at home and it was that moment that I was like, because I'd said I'm turning 30 the next month, the only thing I've ever achieved in my life was to get fat. And that's all I could see my value as, which now I see, I look back and I'm like, you were running an amazing restaurant, you have an army of friends, like there was so many other things, but I, that's all I could see. So I remember she texted me at about three o'clock and she said, are you all right, pet? And she had sent me a picture of baby lamb and she said, shut up, we're not listening to 
this is you, you're well able, new, new months, all these kind of cringy things. And she's such a dog, I love her so much. Um, and I texted her back and I said, yeah, I've joined the gym. Don't tell any of the girls, I'm going to do this on my own. So look, within a week, I, I set up a journey to my life, WhatsApp group or something like that. Um, but walking into the gym day one was horrendous. It was so embarrassing. Because you're walking into a place that, at the weight that I was at, there's no one in there really that kind of looks like you. So you're more aware of what you look like. And, you know, at that stage, my mental health was very, very low. Where showering, I just didn't see the point. Because I was like, listen, I'm going to, I feel awful in a way. And I remember being in there and I was in the queue and the desk was there. And my, my chest was like caving in with worry. And I was like, everyone's going to mock me. And no one will in the gym. That's the crazy part. But... You, that's how I felt and I remember there was a big hole underneath my cardigan and a lady said oh sorry there's a little rip and I turned around and said don't touch me and I kind of got very aggressive at her which it wouldn't be what I want to be in life at all I don't want to be aggressive but it was just the feeling of another person touching my skin made me feel sick and I remember I joined the gym and I remember thinking as you almost Emma was going through everything I was like well I'm not coming back tomorrow she made that decision there and then and she said that she remembers asking me what are the three things you want to achieve from this 12 weeks? Is it a dress size? Is it weight loss? And I remember I just said, I just want to feel happy again. Will that help? I said, I don't remember what it's like to laugh. I don't know who I am. And I even find it very hard now because if I could just go back and give her a hug and be like, we're all right, we'll fix it. And she said to this day, it was probably one of the most depressed clients she's ever, ever sat in front of. And she said when I left, I don't think we'll see her again. And that's a pity. But I turned up the next day and what I did was we, we set what I now know as boundaries that I trained in a room with my back to the mirror. Nobody else could be around me. When I come in, it was just private because I had no range of motion. I remember sobbing as they were asking me to touch a kettlebell off a bench and I couldn't do it because I couldn't move any part of me. And then slowly but surely, like I had pajamas on for the first few weeks because I couldn't get a pants to fit me. But slowly but surely, my, my focus changed from the scales and I started focusing on something else. I started focusing on the feeling that I had for myself and that was pride. And I grabbed that and I kept going. And that's how Trisha's transformation became because I took the I took the power away from what that scales was telling me. And I started telling myself my own thing. Yeah. And that like that is so important. Like with anything in the gym, even for me, I used to do like the, the standard like bodybuilding stuff and I moved away to CrossFit and like more performance based stuff yeah. because like when you're focusing on your own body and the scales like it's just so it just doesn't fucking work like it really doesn't work like you need to be like oh awesome. I lifted heavier or like you were like I remember watching you like deadlifting like I was like Trisha go girl like you know what I mean and those are the things that really really like kept you going I suppose and then obviously and right think- yeah, I think it was more progression. Yeah. It was based off of what regression I could do. So we scaled everything right back. And then I was yeah. like, about three weeks in, I was like, I'm, athlete, I'm an athlete. And I remember Emma was like, what? And I was like, yeah, I'm an athlete. I was like, because an athlete does his very best with what they have and they give their maximum effort. And that's what I'm doing right now. So yeah. I stopped focusing on what I couldn't do. And I just was, was like, shut up to my inner voice and been like, just let me do this and let me let me try and be somebody I never thought I could be and it was amazing yeah and you're like the definition of like say your goals out loud because you had like the power of the accountability that you had because you started the Instagram you know when you were right at the beginning and I think you said before that you weren't going to start it you were going to start it at the at the end but you decided yeah and like I know more than anyone as well that like the power of people relying on you and people counting on you sometimes it can be a little bit pre- like you'll feel a little bit of pressure but like at the same time like it really gets you to that point where you're like I can't let these people down and yeah like talk about the power of accountability and like actually saying your goals out loud because as you said before you're like don't tell anyone and then all of a sudden it was just like hey Trisha's transformations like where's my transformer that you know but I think that's that's the part of my journey that I kind of I feel a bit confused by because I set that up for one reason was to keep myself accountable. And I didn't actually do it on Facebook because I knew too many people, random people. So people like you meet at a house party in the bathroom of a nightclub, you meet them in Spain, you're like, oh, there, Tom, you baby girl, I better not like this because I don't know why we're still friends on Facebook. And you've aunts and uncles and cousins. And I said, 
I would do it on Instagram and I remember all my family were like worried because they were afraid negativity would come at me and people would mock me and stuff like that and they were right they were just kind of precaution but as per usual I'm stubborn I was like I'm going to do it and so that Instagram page was never to keep other people accountable it was only me and then it backfired and now here I am sitting chatting today so the power of accountability is incredible and I think that when you have somebody that wants something for you nearly more than what you want yourself and that you have to answer to whether that's a coach a friend a personal trainer it's so important but what I would say is make sure you have a good boundary set that that person doesn't get so invested it gets overwhelmed and you're like okay now you're just being rude like I am actually just tired I can't do the walk so I find accountability is incredible and I think that like everything it's a tool it's not your be all and end all you're the person in charge would have that tool and even it's like your say your goals out loud I remember listening to that being like you know, I, I didn't get it. I was like, what is she talking about? Like, you know, when you don't manifest or you don't meditate, all of that seems so different to you. But it's the power of leaving yourself, get the chance to learn. And if you learn it and you don't like it, drop it. If you learn it and you love it, excel it. So that's what I've been doing lately. Like you said, the, you know, typical for weight class, get up in the treadmill there for 30 minutes. Absolutely not. Give me the clean and fetch. Give me, I don't even know what the right words that sounds wrong. <laughs> Deadlift, give me the presses. I want to perform and I want to push my body to places that I never thought Trisha Lewis at 27 and a half so could. Yeah. I just want to ask this because I feel this also. Because obviously so many people are watching you and, you know, I, I'm the same. You know, I ended up stepping away from a little bit of fitness stuff because I used to be fit. Like my f- first thing was fitness. And I, I actually felt a lot of pressure to be the certain weight and the certain stuff all the time and I just was like I need to move away from this and um I felt a lot of pressure and that with all these eyes around me and like I gained weight or like something happened or you know I wasn't doing the same thing like I did feel a lot of pressure and I and I had to step away sometimes but do you ever feel like that I do and I think that I think it gets very confusing and I, I, in one way I understand in another way I'm like oh please who cares what size I am like I find that when people put pressure on going what weight you know what size you know have you gained weight this week have you lost that weight and sometimes you might be in that mind frame and you'll open that message and you go oh my god I actually have my clue will I go up the scale and it could just that's where I find that pressure is yeah. intense now thankfully I have said it out loud and I've said it on my page that that's a little bit of a boundary and I just I just feel that when it comes to the scales it absolutely dictated how I acted from 12 to 29 I don't want that from 30 to please God 89 I want to just feel happy and with that that's the only time I ever really feel pressure is when there is I suppose questions that make me uncomfortable because the thing to say I might have an Instagram page and I might have all these followers and, and I love my transformers bits but I'm still a very vulnerable person on a weight loss journey that I have been traumatized by comments and people refusing to sit beside me on planes. And so whenever I hear the word weight, there's always that little bit of a insecurity and doubt. So even if it's just a nice question or a mean question, whatever it is, they kind of still give me the same feeling. But I'm working through all of that in therapy. So I think that's that's where I find the pressure. But 99.9%, you know yourself, Sinead, are amazing. They respect that and they're like, I don't care what size pants you wear. Like, we just want to see what you're cooking or you're, you're deadlifting. But <laughs> that's where the part of the page where I'm like, is it Trisha's weight loss journey or is it my life transforming? That I just need to make sure that I'm okay with that identity. And that some days the scales are up and some days the scales are down. But that's my own, my own thing. Yeah, definitely. Like, I think changing from the scales and, and the pressure and like you took on like more of just Trisha and like you came about like more your personality and it was just just so refreshing to see and and it's so nice to watch your journey to where you are now and let's um talk about something okay so let's talk about therapy a little bit right so there's also this was there like a expectation of how you were like you know when you lost the weight of how you would feel and then the difference of like because like in, in meditation or anything like that we call this thing like I'll be happy when syndrome and it's like I'll be happy when I have a husband I'll be happy when I do this and that, when I do that and then you know what we're taught with meditation and, and mindfulness and self-love journey is that 
you know the I'll be happy when syndrome doesn't work and you have to literally go inner and really find your like self-love and I think when I spoke to you last you were like I have a few things to figure out and you were like I'm in therapy and I was like yeah it's amazing so what made you go to therapy and how are you getting on with it I I always thought with therapy I was never that bad does that make sense that I think that the, yes. the idea I had with it was like try don't need that I know what's wrong I just need to lose weight and I remember I met you in Dublin I remember you had said oh what are your three things you want to achieve and we were just chatting away and I remember I said like weight loss a partner and a house and I remember you were like you shouldn't have your you know scales as your be all and end all and I was like mm, okay but in my head I was like yeah I should because that's my value now I totally understand why when you heard that you were like no 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 put your self-worth first so with therapy I I suppose I had to figure out a few things um I suppose I always thought an eating disorder and so ignorant on my behalf that it was somebody who had lost too much weight that I was like there's no I'm just fat you know I didn't see but what I figured out was I do have a binge eating disorder and it's not based off of an addiction to food or anything it's an addiction to negative feelings so what I found out from therapy is number one I had no boundaries absolutely none I would do everything for everybody a disease to please yes 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 I had a gym booked to 10 you need me to do something at 10 to 10 I cancel gym because I want to be that person and that is something that the more you people it's not other people's fault it's what you're doing um i'd no boundaries if someone asks me you know people are like on about like salary you should never disclose close your salary and those kind of things i never have a boundary anyway i'm like i don't care this is what i do but in private life i'd no boundaries whatsoever and i had no self-worth i'd let people and friends walk all over me and <clears throat> i didn't think any of those were connected to weight but they were so once i sat down with my therapist and she went through it and said like you know it was a form of self-harm what you were doing you know, if I felt lonely, I would eat. If I felt happy, I would eat. If I felt sad, I would eat. It was constantly associated with every emotion that I had. And even a simple thing like, I don't think I've ever even said it out loud, one of my biggest downfalls is if I feel lonely, I'm going to go to a restaurant, I will overeat, but I'll spend the whole time on my phone. And I just remember my therapist being like, this is something that happens a lot of people. What you're doing is you're pushing something down, which is the feeling of not being around or feeling like you're single or whatever. And she said, the next time you do it, what I just want you to do is bring no phone and smile at two or three people in the restaurant. And by God, I did not overeat that day because it became from mind to see eating to actually enjoying the experience. I mean, like, I like this dining out alone thing. This is such a nice. So from therapy, I've realized that, you know, it wasn't like, not that it's not my fault, but I've stopped being, I've stopped, I put down the stick that I was flogging myself with saying like, you know, I had all the food. I was the one that did all this and I ruined all, it was just part of life and, and I'm healing. I'm healing in a way like this trauma from childhood, this trauma from the middle that I haven't spoke about that there's so many traumas that I'm working through. And, and what I found with therapy is it gave me answers to questions I never asked that I was like, all right. So what's the question for that? I'm going to ask that. And it was just wonderful. And I walk out and it was a lovely little lady and down in Port McSherry and I'd walk out and I'd be like, can we, can we do a hug? And she'd be like, COVID. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? It's funny because I read your book and you talked about, and this reminds me of my, before I went to therapy and before I went into therapy, you go in and you're like, my childhood was fucking unreal. Grand, happy memories, blah, blah, blah. You go to therapy and they're like, like you know they bring up all these little things and you're like oh that's yes. why I do that and that she is why explain I... to me about my family so she had said can you remember a moment in time where you were very upset as a childhood and all of a sudden it went to my head and I was like yeah yeah I was wearing a red jumper and I ran out I had lied about a playstation or something I don't know what it was and I was crying like down by the garden and she was like okay so that tells me so much that you had no safe space in a house of 11 people you were to run outside and do that I was like Okay, but then I felt guilty because I was like, oh, am I giving out? Well, ma'am, I'm not. I'm not. I'm yeah. a great happy childhood. But what she had said was the reason why when I was alone, the binge eating started was because I am the seventh of the nine girls. So I was born into a loud, packed house full of love, crack, great environment. My first job was a chef. So it was a brigade, loud, packed, great environment. And then when I was on my own, I struggled because I didn't know who I was without yeah. a pack of 
without a try. So she's like, that's where you have, that's where your triggers are. And it made so much sense. And I was like, it is all my family's fault. <laughs> no, I but I was, it was just, <laughs> when I'm alone, when I'm alone, yeah. I struggle. But now that I have that, when I feel alone, sometimes I'm like, why should be grateful for the beast? Yeah. And like, you, you don't realize like they're, they're such small little things and it's nobody's fault. And like the therapist always tells you that like, you know, this isn't your mom or dad's fault or whatever. It's just like how we were, we were like raised, you know what I mean? Like and how they were raised and it's not their fault. Like they don't love you any less. And when you realize that they don't love you any less and like when you're alone, you're not any less. It's just, you were obviously used to being like that. And then you know, you would probably get so much validation and dopamine for from being, you know, as you said in like your book as well, like you're the funny one, you're having the crack. So then when you're by yourself, like, you know, where's your validation? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So then you needed like that bit of dopamine and stuff like that. And you know what? Like, I don't know if you've listened to the emotional, we did an emotional eating um, podcast before. I think it's on season one. And he just said that as well. He's like, once you start figuring out all that stuff, like, because you know someone who's emotionally eaten or someone who's then they're going to gamble then they're going to smoke then they're going to drink it's it's all like until you get to those core moments of you know the reasons why you do all those addictive behaviors that you don't get to the core because I'm sure as well as you learned is that you you know you lost weight and you you probably felt and then you went to therapy as well so you know it all came and how do you feel now like knowing all those little triggers and stuff like that unbelievable I feel more at ease and I'm not as frightened of the journey I think that I was always afraid that this overwhelming urge to binge eat and to throw it all out the window was always imminent around the corner but from therapy I'm like no I know what I, I gotta do and if things are gonna leave it wrong like we went down to Claire last summer with my sisters and just going down I was just like all flustered and they were like what is wrong with you like we're going quite clear and I'm like sometimes I might sneak away from the group and I might go and eat three croissants and then I feel bad and I might feel really guilty and all they were like okay that's no problem so they were like if you want to go and have your three croissants let one of us go with you or you know let us join and it never happened because I said it out loud that sometimes if I got overwhelmed this is what I do and I was like and if I go ahead and be in a restaurant I'll have a starter before you have it or you know like the, the what I wrote about in the book was how many times did I order for my friend Mary in the drive through McDonald's? And I go, oh, I think she needed like three cheeseburgers, 20 nuggets, but they were all for me. And I was just so embarrassed of that. But when you say it out loud, it takes the power from it. And that's what I found like one billion percent. I think therapy, if anyone's thinking about it, just chance it. Like I did it with a lady in Court McSherry and then I did it with BetterHelp online um, over the pandemic. And I just... I just thought it was incredible and I, I do think it's life-changing for me yeah I, c- I can see it as well and I'm and even when I was speaking to you that last time when you said and I was like I know she's just gonna come out of this like a different fucking person and hard said, though. yeah what therapy's hard sometimes they're like oh why am I crying what have you done I know and then I'm like where did that come from I know and do, do they do seriously like um ever do like meditations or like I suppose that's a psychotherapist and then that's it's sort of changes but um, have you ever heard of NLP? No. Oh yeah, because I've done NLP on that stuff as well. Like where you're like so relaxed and chilled in meditation, and it's like go back to the moments where you didn't feel enough, or someone made you feel didn't feel enough, and you're like, oh, and you remember the clothes, you remember where you were, and you remember everything, and then you have to. This is when you do like, have you done inner child work? Yes. Oh my God, it's awful. But it's <laughs> so brilliant. It's, it's yeah. brilliant. Yeah, and then you have to go back to this like child or like where it, like it could even be in your adult years where something happened and you have to go back and like be like, it's okay and like yeah. you're amazing because we really did internalize those little tiny things. Like you talked in your book as well about um being bullied. Yeah, and when you're that young and people are bullying you, you're not allowed into their circle. You don't feel good enough when in fact yeah. it's nothing to do like with that. Like you were born enough but yeah. you internalize because you didn't have those skills when you're a kid to be like oh that person's just like that because they don't understand this and they don't know me as well as I know me so yeah how do you think like the bullying definitely affected you know who you were who you are now and how have you went back and really like reparented or have you done yes. that like went back and like reparented that bully it child? makes me so sad when I look back because the only thing that was ever said was fat overweight pig and all this but when I see pictures of me at that age 
that will whip everything. Like I'm absolutely, there is nothing that's in that looking at my body type being like, oh, you were thin. It's like, but Chino Elian is a normal child. So it's amazing the power of what words can do and how I had internalized that. And that's who I actually became. So I remember the bullying. I always felt like it wasn't that bad that I could report it, let's say. But I remember one time when we were going into the toilets and they'd gotten compasses and they'd wrote Trisha is fat and all over things. And I remember it was the only time I ever kind of opened up and I told my teacher and I said, like, that's in there. And I was born in fine. I was 10 years of age. And when I was in the next day, I thought, like, they're all going to be in trouble and things were going to be sorted. And I just went into the bathroom and was painted over. So nothing was ever said. So when I look back now, I can see that it wasn't my fault, but there were certain parts in it that I was let down, that there was things that, you know, if if someone had just said to me, you're not that person, because the only person I told didn't help, I said nothing. And then what I found was once those girls, they were a year ahead, went on to secondary school, I became kind of like a bit of a, like a bit of a bitch because I was like, right, I need to kind of be top dog here, be loud, be funny, be great crack and get the jokes in before somebody says it to me. And that's where I found the bullying. Now, in one way that I find that everything kind of happens for a reason, that's given me the personality I'm today that got me to my executive HR position, not bullying, by just being sure of who I was. And um, it was just, and I think that around that time, I was, you know, looking at people on X Factor and be like, this person's 12 stone, this one's 14 stone. I used to buy all those magazines and I think it all just affected. I was kind of bullying myself as well around that time, you know, and I remember being in secondary school and someone had like looked at my jar jumper and was like, oh my God, yours is size 50. And I was like, oh my God, what's yours? And it was like a 32 or something. I was like, so embarrassed. But instead of calling that person out, which was what I would do now, I internalized. Yeah. And you, and, and like our generations as well, like as you said, those magazines, like we've seen some of them being resurfaced now on Instagram. Have you seen them? Like the, the Now Never. magazines and we're like, and it's literally like best and worst beach bodies and you'd have like the worst beach bodies and you'd be like, are you being serious? Like literally like the most banging body ever. Like I like yeah. want this body. And it was known as like the bad beach bodies. And like, it's so mad because so many things I don't remember as a kid, but I fucking remember reading them magazines. And yeah. I also remember, you know, I, I spoke about this before, like I remember like my mom complaining about her weight and people around me complaining about their weight. And when someone complains and, and doesn't feel good enough, like, you know, you internalize that as a child, you don't have the skills. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And like, do you think those magazines, like how do you feel now when you look at those magazines and think like, what, what advice would you give to someone who sees this? I think as, my heart as, breaks for the person that the picture was taken of. Like they're just people doing their job and they just have, they just have more of a, a life, like they're a celebrity. They're just still normal humans who, no matter what money you have, no matter what following you have, that hurts. So when I see that, I feel kind of embarrassed for the person who wrote it and sad for the person who's on it. And I think that it's so like what we, like we don't, we, when it comes to social media and that's what it is now because you know, in magazines, is now Instagram and stuff. It's, you know, a phone can either change your life or ruin someone else's. So that's what I feel like. They shouldn't be printed. I think, like, if someone's got cellulite, like, I'm so, like, I look at a thing when I'm so jealous that she's in a bikini I've never worn one in my life. So it's all about where someone is in a journey. And and if, if people, if that's what sells by shaming other people, well, then shame on them. Because I remember when I was younger, looking at it, someone had said, woman is 14 stone and rest my sister, do I look like her? And she's like, yeah, you're really similar. And I was part of it. Because the magazine had said this person was huge. Like, I, I didn't know what I meant by stones, but they were shaming her. And I remember mm. being like, what? And then my sister was like, she's beautiful. But I was like, okay, cool. And then I moved on. So it's just so, it's so dangerous what, we, what people consume, especially young girls. Yeah. And, and do, you think, do you think the world is changing now? Do you think like? I think it is, but I still think. As a person in an overweight body, there is still a stigma and a shame about it. There is still people who will only look at people who are weight and use that as a weapon. I still, now, do I think everyone? No, but I still think there's a good number out there. But I still find that that's one of the main reasons I don't drink in a bar anymore. Like, I, I just don't. Because I know somebody after a couple of drinks will throw a comment at me, male or female. Always, oh, really? without a doubt. You know, the anxiety I would have to walk to the bathroom. Even though I have... 200,000 followers and don't put it down on Instagram, I would still have that fear walking to the bathroom going, is someone going to tell me a name? So I do think it's changed and I think that hopefully our voices and millions of others will 
join on and go, stop judging people for how they look. It's weird, but it's still out there in my experience. But I don't know, I can't vouch for somebody of, like yourself because yeah. he, everybody has a different experience. But for me personally, there is still that fear out there that she didn't see it. Like when you get those trolling messages, it's always to do with the cheap shots are still out there. And like, it's, but you know what? The, I'm going to say this about trolling and it doesn't matter because you see, right? It'll be something else. If it wasn't yeah. this, it'd be something else. And that's something you, I think you have to fucking learn when you're, when you're like us. And like, this is a, a very, I think, I, did I tell this to you? I can't remember. I was, uh, voice it, it's in this. Somebody was chatting and they were like, you know, got really badly trolled. And I goes, look, here's a, here's a small little example of like how it works. When me and Jack went to a, a wedding and we had, we didn't have matching outfits. They were mortified that I didn't, they were like, oh my God, why would you not match your outfits? Like you look so clashed and all this, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, like Jack's not going to buy a brand new suit for my dress. Like it's not, but anyway, I didn't say anything. And then the next one, we were actually matching. And then yeah. they were like, oh my God, how cringy matching. So you could, and like, it, it makes no sense. You can't win. Like if you're a doctor or a nurse, they would be like oh you don't work hard enough but like if you're not a doctor you'd be like why are you not doing you know like it's just like constant constant thing and like you know especially I don't know is it is it just Ireland do you think that's like this where I, I don't know like this, I feel like we get a lot more trolled than like some of my friends in England or America yeah so um yeah what like, I find and what I find is because I have a few friends who have their male and they have a high followings they don't get it at all no not and I was trying to Jerry Labs about this and I was like oh how do you feel about it? and he was like I don't really get it and I was like um what do you mean it is like women do get it more but it's because like they don't realize that their internal things coming up like that we're not supposed to be successful or we're not supposed to be this like do you know what I mean it's reform like they desire to <laughs> it's hard to say that because people will be like no fuck it's not jealousy blah 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 but like it's I think it's I, don't, I don't know what it is it's successful it's successful women that are getting the most backlash and it's because and I say, I always say this about Caroline Black as well like I always said like you know she got so much backlash when she was on X Factor and stuff and she just she was a confident successful woman and we were all I what it felt like, for her. like I just think that scale like if, if I never grew again with Instagram I actually would be very very happy because I don't know how my mindset would be with more on top of me. I just don't know where, like, now, saying that in the same breath, I'm so incredibly lucky. I can work from where I want. I was able to set up my own company. I've written two books. I am so privileged to have the platform I have. So everything comes everything comes at a price. And if that's the price I have to pay, I'll pay it no problem at all. But I just think for, for, for people who are at home at three or four o'clock in the morning, analyzing everything you put up in your story, just go to bed and get up and go for a walk and have a glass of ice water and hug someone you love because life life is for the living and it's not for ripping other people down and I just fear that if I was 19 with my following that I mentally 100% wouldn't have been able for it maybe because I'm 34 I'm a little bit older and I'm like oh going away like grand do you think I'm fat obviously I've got an Instagram page where I'm on a weight loss journey I have never hit that like, you know, you think I'm a sellout. Okay, no problem. Off you go, all that kind of stuff. But I just think people need to focus on themselves. And yes, if somebody's doing something wrong and irresponsible mm -hmm. online, of course, but do it in a nice way. Don't do it in a, a bullying way. It's weird because like, these are grown-ass people. Yeah, I mean, we just got to rise above and just let, you know, like let, let, let I whatever I find meditation happens. helps. That helps. Oh. Are we going to talk about meditation now? Never in my life did I think Trish Lewis would be talking about meditation. Who am I? <laughs> it's amazing. So I bought your course, the 21 day, sorry. The, I'm the brave way. Disrespectful. I'm like the brave way. Um, it's absolutely the coolest thing in the entire world. Anyone oh who's listening God. now and is not even, is even thinking, will I, will I do it? Just do it. Just do it. It's so quick, so short, so effective. And I love the fact that you don't force me to do 21 days in a row because I'm not going to be consistent. You're like, pick it back up whenever you can. And I hate when it goes, and now let's get back to the room. I'm like, no. <laughs> oh, that's good. The fact that you don't want to go back to the room is 
a vibe. It means that you can sit in your own self, which, you know, when people first start the meditating, like the even me, the first time I ever met, I was like, get me out of here, get me out of here, get me out of here. Like I didn't want to be in, and even like I did my, I, I did my silent retreat there and people were like, she had high how did you do that and like you know because I'm meditating for eight hours a day you're basically meditating for 24 hours a day because you're like not talking either and I'm like you know what the fact that we can't do it that's where the problem lies sometimes like the fact we can't sit with ourselves and okay right so you did the bravery okay give me some what, what did you get from it or was there anything well, any honestly, realizations it was amazing. oh there's always a lot of tears it was just incredible I just there was one part where it was like you said go to the gate go on past the gate there's a path keep on walking then this tree appears and like oh, even yeah. previous kind of making myself open to it I'd be like oh my gosh shut up you lose like what yeah. is this about and then you're like the person's going to be at the tree and like that's the person who's your it's your soul like what was the it depends on what comes up for you like you know sometimes you can take people on a journey and when they're so relaxed their subconscious and their spirit guide comes up sometimes I, 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 I yeah yeah so I remember when I was walking down the path and you were guiding so me through my spirit ones. guide. Amazing. Yeah, and I was like, okay, this better be a handsome man. <laughs> wants to marry me. And I was like trying to manifest it. And then I just burst out crying because it was my nana that had passed mm-hmm. away. And I was like, oh, and it felt so real. And it just felt, it was amazing. And like, I just think that meditation for me is like a little mental reset where wherever I'm getting flustered and I have no clarity that I just stick on the headphones for 15 minutes and I'm like, okay, just go. First two or three minutes is very difficult. Yeah. And then I find it's French. I'm like, so I personally think yours is absolutely class. Thank you. You've just given Sorry, me like a rings. little bit. Mi- oh yeah, you're wearing my ring. We're all ringing guys. I'm obsessed with them. Oh I'm my like, God. jingle, 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 jingle. I know. And sometimes you don't realize how much you fucking use them until you're like, you're sitting in a, even now, like I'm sitting using them or in, when I'm in like a, a fucking gyno appointment, I'm like with well, my legs hanging up, like ah! like it's ah. like, actually like fucking not wise. But um, yeah. So we're like, you know what's so funny? Like we both have been on the journey around the same time, and we both started businesses. And yes. you are a business. You're an entrepreneur, gal, it's and you so have a new cool. business venture as well. Yeah. So I launched Sharp by Trish Lewis last week, which is surreal. Um, it's been something that. I suppose over lockdown, go for a walk. I was like, I'd love to do that. And then I was like, why won't I? Just go for it. So I corresponded with a family in Switzerland who guided me in the kind of correct, because I know what a good knife is as a chef in career, but to get the proper kind of steel and handle and production. And we ended up creating these a set of knives that are just class in a beautiful little box. And um, I'd have ready with about six months. So I didn't actually launch them because I wasn't ready myself mentally. And yes. I was like, no, I want to enjoy this. I don't want to just put this out there because I know I have people who, who support me. I want to make sure I'm doing this in the right way possible. So I launched last week and it's been the most surreal. It's so cool. And I literally have a company. I'm like, what? It's it's amazing that how my, my journey has came from, you know, being overweight, working in a restaurant to now being the happiest I've ever been, being the fittest I've ever been and also owning my own company, which is, with the coolest set of knives you'll ever get in your entire life there is something so cool about like having your own company like it's even even like when you haven't even made any money yet and you've just like set it up and you're like whoa this is like so so cool and the, the thing about your company as well so aligned with you and I feel like when people are always asking me you know oh she well you've got meditation and you've got this and blah 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 I'm like yeah but you don't understand like how many niches there is to have your own company like there's so many different things that you align with and like for you to bring out your own knives like that's so aligned with you and like what advice would you give to someone who's like even things like baking like when someone like makes bakes and then like starts up their own company or something so small like you know and you're even in your local town you see people setting up their own company it's just so it's so hard it's so heartwarming as well and yeah so what advice would you give to someone like setting up a company because people are so in- in, um, intimidated by setting up a company going into the accountant going in and setting up all this stuff and I always say wing it but well first of all what's what what's your advice because it's, it is daunting like hey let's go set up a company isn't it yeah it's terrifying I had the clue I had the clue I've always been paid by a person who owns a company I've never I've never in my life had to know what you know, farms and stuff like that. So what I'd say probably the best advice is wing it, but also get an incredibly good accountant mm-hmm. that just says, 
here is what you need. And what I find, I have an amazing accountant, Stephanie Galway, and she's the same accountant for Brian Keane. He referred me to her. He was like, she is just so good. What I found was in all scenarios of life, is communication is key. So she might have asked me for five or six things and I was like freaking out here at home. And then I just said, I was like, Stephanie, one job at a time. And then I will complete that. And if it takes me one year longer to set this up, I just can't do them all in one go. So what I would say is wing it and also have such belief in yourself. Like you have to believe your product more than anyone in the entire world. Don't do something because you think others will like, do something you love and others will like that. And that's why I, I just think that, you know, I read a line that it's like, like obviously setting a company up is not for everyone. But for me at the part of my life that I mean, it was like, um, no matter how good your job is, it is never guaranteed because you're a salary to a company and a company's objective is to cut costs. So just always, you know, push yourself to the limit because at the end of the day, like if this goes wrong, I go bust, I go bankrupt, whatever it is. I've been broke all my life. <laughs> I yeah. can just keep on going and get another, like I still have a really good shipping skills behind me. So I think when you remove the fear and obviously do it when you're in a position that it's not going to affect anybody else. But, you know, do it in a way you feel safe, but wing it. And I don't think anyone who sets a company up knows what they're doing until it's done. Because you know, anyone yeah. I spoke to, is the same thing is sort of like, just go with the flow and it'll happen. Just keep keep checking with legal. Is that legal? Is that, you know, you're like, is that right? I won't get a tax for this. <laughs> you know, and that's what I did. I still don't have a fucking clue. Like I've three for the last three years and I, I still to this day, I'm like, well, what do I need to do to the accountant? And my advice as well is like, there were so many times where I had ideas in my head. And when I went forward, like I never went forward for years. Like I had the idea, I had the idea. And one day I just stepped into the enterprise and I was like, hi, I have a business idea. And they were like, yeah. And you know, the government actually really want you to set up your own business. So yeah. even lo- stepping into your local enterprise, there's going to be, um, a, like, there's going to be people there that will help you for free set up a business. Like it's actually, and they tell you where to go. So it's not like you just have to go into a kind of like, hello, can you help me? Like you can literally walk into an enterprise or you can go like, there's loads of free services online and stuff to help you and even if it's something so small like say like you want to help people build social media and like do their social media like it's so simple you can just go in and they'll help you and you and you get an accountant and then from then on you just fucking wing it and like what I'll say is as well is look at look at my first company was Brave Retreat and it failed because of COVID. Um, I also was out a lot of money in, you know, staff and, uh, you know, marketing. I also paid for 25 people to go on holidays uh, to do a retreat. And um, my first business venture that I firstly went into that I was so scared to do that took me so long to walk in and ask for the help um, failed and had like minus money in my first year. And I, and you know what? See, whenever it failed and I was minus money, it just made me more determined to do more things for to have my own company and have my own work because another thing was like as you said some working for somebody else and you know they they could just drop you and there was you know there was times people would drop you and you're like you know what? I don't want this for my life and for my children and for my and my future like I want to actually take take it you know myself and I did that and you know if anyone's listened to this like how much do you care if I failed at that day like I failed that that year right and had minus and had to like rebuild other or other things like I started a new meditation course and blah blah blah, and I put more money into that company but um yeah like you, no one gives a fuck like you think people care like you think oh my god I'm gonna be so embarrassed if I feel like sit sit there now if you're listening to this and think about me feeling like and how much you don't care about me feeling do you know what I mean and and we fear that we fear what people think about us all the time you know what I mean and we feel like we have to be successful for it to be the good move, but not at all. Like failure is feedback. It just gives you another idea of like, you know, what can I do next? And I think that what will it stop me for years? But like, it's already been done. But there hasn't been an original idea in about a thousand years. Just do what you love and go for it. You know, and it's just, I think it's it's the most fun and also scary thing I've done in a long time. It's, you know, what doesn't challenge you doesn't change you. You have to keep on going. Yeah, so you're full. You're full of it today. Feel your feedback and Telling doesn't tell. I know <laughs> you're full of life today. And so you've just started the knives. You're you've got two books out now. You you're fucking flying though. Like you're literally like an inspiration to everyone. And you know you've come such a long way from when I first. I can't even remember when I first saw it. So it must have been 2018. It would have been no. It would have been 2019. I think we kind of 
correspondent because I knew Siobhan with ages because Siobhan was actually, fun fact, first person who ever gave me a shout out. So oh. Siobhan put me and I was like, oh, his fit is just shared. And I was like, I don't know what this oh, is. Because I had, it was incredible. So from there, she'd been so supportive. And then I think she shared me again. And then you popped up and I was like, who the hell are you? I was like, I know you, you don't know me. I love you. <laughs> so <laughs> you're definitely, we're definitely chatting with about three years, which is amazing. Wow. And so what is next for Trisha? So um, I'm going to continue on with my weight loss journey because at the end of the day, I want to be the healthiest and happiest I've ever been. And I don't want to add years on to the end of my life. I want to have quality years now. So it's all about enjoying the journey and not focusing really on the destination. Um, I want to continue on being happy. I want to continue on. Like I think a lot of times I always focus on what was from the neck down. I want to look at what's in my mind. Is my mind happy? Is my mind healthy? Because everything else follows after that. I find that when that's at its best, everything else is benefiting. My friends, my family, the crack, the banter, the cooking, everything is all working. So I want to continue on using the resource of therapy if I need it. I want to build my business up. I want to launch more knives. I want to do way more in the space. And I, I mean, and please God, at some stage, get into schools and get into people and just be like, look, Stop this bullying, stop this, you know, mocking people because they're not of this size or they don't look like the filter on Instagram. At the end of the day, a phone can change your life or ruin someone else's. Make that decision. And I think I just want to keep on chatting because what I found in a world I thought I was so alone, there was thousands who felt exactly the same and they were my transformers. So continue not having to crack with them and, and just living life. I'm so happy, Sinead. I never thought I would say that and you know I mean it. And it is the truth. Oh my god, I'm like a wee bit emotional or something because you I don't know, you just have like a big smile on your face and like um I'm just really happy for you. Thank you. Thank you. And right. I think that and why am I so emotional? It's a hormone. Oh my god. I know, I know. <laughs> and I and I'm I, I so grateful of things like this because if I'd have went back four years ago and said to Trish, right, Sinead Hegarty, who is so cool and is like, you know, the person you follow online is gonna have you on your podcast about your weight loss journey. I honestly would have felt like someone was mocking me. So it's these little things. They're not the big moments like going to cook alongs and doing these events and corporate talks and stuff. It's these moments when I finish this that I go, yes. Yeah, I'm gonna nice. I wanna I wanna change something here. I wanna say being on here for your weight loss journey, I wanna change that because it's not that's not why you're here. You're here for your inspirational journey. Thank and you. I want you, I want you to stop. I feel like I want you to stop saying that. That's my advice to you. I want you to say my inspirational dream. Like you're here to inspire people because where you were, like when even when you read your book or you hear about your story and you know, all those times where you had like really, really, really rock bottom times. And like from there to where you are is so inspiring because you never gave up and you kept going and you're working on your mind, you know. So I think you should stop with the saying it's your weight loss you know, you're probably the third person that said to me that in the last few weeks even yeah because that's you've stuck that to your identity a little bit a little bit and I think that I'm afraid of leaving that go because then I'm like but I've always been weight whether it's losing it or gaining it and I think that I do need to let that go um but it's so frightening but I get there maybe episode two I'm like I need to talk and I found even another girl on Instagram just said take her weight out of the bio that's weird she was like you that is yeah. not who you are so they don't follow you to know that you're 18.73 stone. She's like, that's weird. She was like, I follow you for you. And I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Because it would be weird if your weight was in your bio. But I feel yeah. like I have to put it up there for others. And and I think to say the number of my scales will never, ever, ever have the power of my happiness again. No way. That is just yeah. the rule that I make. <laughs> and like, this is your happiness journey. Like, this is your, like, I think you, you, you've, like and, and like I said this as well my identity podcast about when I met someone and they were like saying they're oh well I'm just a bad person at camp or whatever and I was like change that right now because every single day you get up and be your best and the best that you can be in that day and I'm like that's who you are you're the person that's like going for it every single day and like you're so much more than that Trisha like you're so you know inspirational to young women like and you have the confidence you can come online and you can share everything and like you know you're an entrepreneur and I and you have two fucking books there is so much fucking more to you and I feel like I feel like I yeah, this is this is your inspirational journey okay yeah and I, think I, need to, 
I need to start stop. I need to stop worrying about other people with that because at the end of the day, it is about resilience. It's about resetting. It's about things going wrong. And I think that when it comes to weight loss journeys, there's no room for failure. If you see and you're like, oh, should we have that, etc. Leave all them go. All those kind of identities go. At the end of the day, I get up every day. I do my best to be a good sister, like friend, auntie, godmother. And that's all I can do. You just can be your best. Every, and I, that's what I'm slowly realizing. That, you know, my sister said to me that day, when are you ever going to see who we see? And I think I finally do. That I'm like, okay, I get it. I'm going to stop self harming in the way that I am with food and I'm going to put myself first and that's what I'm doing okay right I haven't I haven't asked this question in a long time on the podcast but since we're talking about this you said um what do you I feel like I finally feel like that so can you please tell me two things that you love about yourself yeah um my legs I'm very sorry is this what? personal to your body because you're like um i think that i love i love my legs because they don't they're 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 fine pair legs but the most important thing is i think i love my personality i think i know i know who i am i know that i'm not a bad person i know that i probably have made mistakes in the past but i've learned from them and that i know that i'm kind so I, i love my i love my personality and and I think I just love myself. Does that, is that a good idea? I love it. Because I didn't want to pick my legs there because in my head I was like, am I just dissing my stomach and I'm seeing this as a problem. I love every part of me. I'm able to get up every single day and I'm so lucky that, yeah, I might have bingo wings. I might have excess skin, Stop but it. I'm still able to do a birthday. That doesn't define me. <laughs> so like, I'm very grateful for the body that I'm in right now. And I know my body will change. But for this moment in time, I'm grateful for my body because it's able to give me so much relief of excitement and adrenaline. And, and I'm grateful for my mind. So there's the two, my body and my mind. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I, I'm vibing with it. And in a roundabout way, I got there. <laughs> you got there. You got there. Um, yeah. So like, I mean, I think we can finish it here. I feel like you have inspired so many people already. And I really hope that people hear this story and be inspired by you and you know don't um, give up that's the thing yeah don't give up don't give in to other people's opinions don't give in like i remember the first time i ever heard of was ants was from you they're automatically never could negative thoughts they're yeah. the ones you need to make quieten them down very very fast and soon enough you'll realize that you know all along the answer was there you have the power it's you you can do it don't rely on a diet plan don't rely on a coach don't rely on an instagram page rely on you wake up every single day and go, please save me from whatever I'm feeling, save me. And it will happen. It will happen 100%. Oh my God, motivational speech over here. Like this will be used on the on the reel anyway, all these motivational yes. vibes. And um, yeah, I think like guys, you, you've, you've heard it here from Trisha and you can tell us now where we can get everything that we need to get, your knives, your books, um are we going to be oh are you doing any shows or anything this year are you doing any because sometimes you do like you you travel around and stuff like that so, that so I'm going to be at, well this year i'm going to be a cooking at taste of dublin which i'm really looking forward to Ooh. um very excited Ooh. i will be at the plowing championships with aldi because i'm a brand ambassador of aldi yeah. and it was funny because I think I was like, this is the lamest and the coolest thing I've ever done. So I was, I was in Lanzarote for the week it was on and then LD were like chatting away to me and then I was like, oh my God, I'm in Lanzarote, I'm going to miss the blowing match because I'm, I'm such a country culture. So then yeah. they were like, it's no problem. Like, we'll catch you for another event because they're brilliant to me. And then I just emailed, I was like, hello. I was like, I rescheduled my flights. I fly in on the <laughs> Tuesday with the winds and they were like, no, that's dedication. So I'll be at the plowing championships on the second day. Um, you can get my books and my knives on my website, which is www.trishastransformation.e. And the majority of me is all running my Instagram page, Trisha Transformation. Amazing. And it's amazing to have you on and sharing your journey and being so vulnerable with us. And yeah, guys, and thank you so much for listening to today's podcast. And I hope you got so much from it. Leave us a little review and let us know what you think. Tag us on Instagram and, and make sure you follow Trisha as well. Um, and that's it. Thanks.